Increased intracranial pressure can occur because your patient has only so much room up there to accommodate the things that are present. So the picture on the left hand side here is showing that 80% of the room in the skull is taken up by brain tissue. 10% is taken up by blood supply and 10% is taken up by CSF. Okay, so there's no extra room up there, although in some people it might seem like there is. So what happens then if we add something else to the mix? Look at the picture on the right. Now the patient has an expanding hematoma. Let's say, for example, that this patient was uh, walking, slipped on the ice, fell, hit the back of the head, and now has a subdural hematoma. That subdural hematoma is now taking up 10% of the room in the skull. Now, I think most of us would conceptualize that when that bleeding occurs, that hematoma compresses the brain. But the brain is not the most compressible compartment up there. The brain is not the most compressible compartment. The brain is pushed out of the way, in fact, and will compress the blood supply in the CSF. Okay, so look what happened. We have an expanding hematoma that's a localized injury. That localized injury then is pushing the brain out of the way, compressing the vasculature, causing global ischemia, global edema, and then further decreases in blood flow globally. So that's what this picture is illustrating here. We have the localized injury causing decreased blood flow lo locally, which leads to global ischemia, global edema, and further decreases in blood flow globally. We get into this vicious cycle that's occurring, that's going to continue to increase our intracranial pressure, and at the same time, is going to cause the patient to continue to get worse. So, localized injury is now causing global dysfunction in the patient. 